All right, everybody. So, recently, Bud Light decided to employ a new figurehead as one of their, like, celebrity mascot-affiliated figures, I guess. I I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I don't drink much. And when I do drink, I drink to get fucked up. So I, I never drink beer. Because beer is like the weakest way you can consume alcohol, or at least one of the weakest. So if I'm going to drink, it's going to be like shots of whiskey, or maybe a hard liquor mixed into like, like Sprite or something for like a, something a little bit less harsh. But generally, I, I, I would go for liquor if I'm going to get drunk or, or drink at all. I, I do not like beer. I've had beer twice, and both times I had to spit it out. I actually couldn't get it down my throat. It, it was that bad. Like, the taste wasn't really what did it. It was the smell. The combination of the taste and smell just... I couldn't handle it. Is he even 21? I'm 23! Come on! Bro! Bro, I'm 23? Yeah, I can drink. Um, But yeah, I, uh, I actually tried Bud Light. Which, ironically enough, is the company that we're referencing here. I tried Bud Light, and it was so bad I had to spit it out. Like, the, the taste and the smell at once, just, like, I couldn't fight it. I couldn't fight the urge to gag, and I just, all of it was, was out. Regardless, not really a beer drinker, but besides, uh, you know, I don't really care about beer. You know, like, I if I don't like beer... And it's a brand of beer that I'm not interested in, because I think it's gross, and I just think beer is generally gross. I really just don't care about it. I'm not really interested in any of their, like, advertising campaigns or who they partner with. It's just not an interest to me, really. However, as you can imagine, if they were to, say, partner with somebody who is of a woke identity... Remember, guys, to the right, woke means brown people... Uh, gender and sexual minorities, and uh, everything bad. That is basically what the definition of woke is for the right. Everything bad and minorities existing. So, they're kind of just making it obvious what they mean when they say woke, but they just can't just outright say it, but they make it pretty obvious. Um, that said, you would, the right would definitely have a problem with e whether or not they care about this beer brand. People on the right would definitely have a problem with the advertising they were engaging in if it was with someone who is part of a woke identity group, right? We all know the trend, and that's exactly what's happened once again. A bunch of conservatives are mad at a company that makes a product they probably don't even consume because they did something woke. The person in question is Ben Shapiro, and the woke person in question is Dylan Mulvaney, who we talked about, uh, er, like in a previous video. She's just some, like, TikToker who's kind of a theater kid. She's trans, and, uh, her content's pretty cringe, but there's really nothing objectionable about it morally. It's literally all just right-wingers desperately trying to find excuses to, like, harass a trans woman who has a large following online, because that shouldn't be allowed in their, in their view, right? Like, a trans person having any level of online following should be, like, fought with every um, ounce of their being, because that's normalizing trans people's existence, which is, of course, the counter to what they want to do. They want to unexist trans people. <laughs> so, yeah. Regardless, the right has lost their shit over this new Dylan Mulvaney beer ad. I haven't even seen the beer ad. I've just seen screenshots of it. And I've also seen a lot of conservatives calling for, like, the execution of Dylan Mulvaney, accusing her of being a pedophile. And when I looked into why they thought she was a pedophile, it's because she made a TikTok in which she lip syncs audio from a movie for a popular TikTok trend. And in that TikTok, and she's, like, cosplaying the character, and the character she's cosplaying is underage like a little girl and like she's lip syncing the words of the character and so the right accused her of doing trans age and being a pedophile and so the writer calling for her execution and her and for her to be killed because she is a supposed pedophile when in reality the evidence that they have that she is a pedophile is a tiktok she made where she lip syncs a line from a movie 
from a little girl while cosplaying said little girl for a fucking TikTok. So yeah, these people are definitively evil. They do want all trans people dead, and they will find any excuse to justify uh, your murder if you are trans. Our entire culture has now decided men are women, women are men, and you must be forced to consume products that says so. This can... I, once again, guys, the insistence that, like, the, the insistence that on one hand, they are the silent majority, but on the other, all of society disagrees with them at this point, and they are fighting a, like, ragtag resistance against the overwhelming, like, popular belief. So is it like the Trump supporters and the right are the silent majority who actually have the most votes and won the election? Or are they underrepresented and the Electoral College is the only thing that makes it so Republicans have a fair shot and otherwise it would be, you know, tyranny of the majority as they call it? Or are they actually the silent majority? Like, which one is it? The, 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 the answer to this question is it's a different answer every time. If it is more beneficial for the right to look like a silent majority for a certain argument, they will claim to be a silent majority. If it looks more uh, uh, effective or, or more like sympathetic for them to be a powerful uh, or sorry, a weak, silent or, or, or weak, loud minority that's fighting for their last bit of representation in this country as they're phased out, they will argue it. They, they literally will change what the right's position is in this country, powerful, weak, whatever it may be, based on what video they're making and what argument they're trying to make, because there is no consistency to it. They can't even acknowledge a consistent reality among their own videos. Like, reality changes from video to video from their own claims, because everything just has to sound like what's best at the time. That's all conservative. All that's all conservative rhetoric is. What sounds best right now? Can be the only reason why Bud Light, a beer, is now promoting itself during March Madness, a male-oriented event, by hiring a man who says he is a woman dressed as Audrey Hepburn to sell you beer. This is a thing that actually happened over the weekend. I, I One of my favorite things about like modern conservative uh, anti-trans content is they're, like, so desperate to disrespect trans people in every way conceivably possible because they, they just, like, they're centered around cruelty. Like, they, they have to maximize how cruel they are to minorities in the left. And so, because they have to maximize the cruelty factor, they overcomplicate what they have to say by pretending like it's super hard to just say trans woman. They have to say man who thinks he's a woman or man pretending to be a woman or predatory man acting like a woman they, they have to like overcomplicate it so much when all they have to say is like they don't need to make the insult but they have to throw it in there to presuppose their correctness like by the way let's not even go into this video like under the impression that there's any argument to be had here trans people are degenerate and evil and invalid and that is the presupposition we've already made going into the video now let's talk about why they don't deserve to have or not why let's talk about instances in which they are being represented and just complain about it because not only does their existence already presuppose bad but their representation is also presupposed bad so this video is literally just entertainment for people who have already agreed trans people don't deserve to exist and they shouldn't be represented. Because there is no argument that's going to be made in favor of trans people are bad or trans people shouldn't be represented. That's already assumed by any viewer going into a Ben Shapiro video at this point. I thought it was an April Fool's joke. Apparently it is not an April Fool's joke, or we have no evidence that it was, and it's now April 3rd. Dylan Mulvaney, who is a man masquerading as a woman, was granted a masquerading. sponsorship by Bud Light. Now, I understand Bud Light is piss water masquerading as beer. That is so true. So I guess that, you know, it's sort of... Let's stop pretending like there is any beer that isn't piss water. Come on. Let's let's stop pretending like beer is good. It's all piss water. It's not good. It's literally just a way for people to consume alcohol slower. So they get drunk slower. So they can consume, like, more total fluid over a longer course of time and slowly wean in the drunkenness nobody like yeah like, like I, I yeah it's diet it's diet liquor no nah, it's not even that it's literally what people drink to not get drunk trans beer i suppose but 
Nonetheless, Dylan Mulvaney was paid money to advertise Bud Light, and they made a special can of Bud Light with Dylan Mulvaney's face on it. Not like Dylan Mulvaney's normal face, like before the, the jaw surgery. So one thing I will say is these conservatives love to desperately claim that these um, moves by these massive corporations that are, you know, woke are going to make them go broke. But that generally never like rears its head like that outcome generally doesn't even happen. And he keeps saying, like, why would Bud, uh, uh, Bud Light do this? Why would Bud Light do this? I they probably have a good reason, if I'm being honest. Fuck massive corporations and all, but like. Their primary goal is to make money. That is all their goal. Like, their bottom line will always be maximize the amount of money they can make. They've got an entire team dedicated to figuring out what would be the best marketing decision to increase their, their revenue. Chances are they had some marketing team decide that having Dylan Mulvaney act as their new, like, partner would be a good decision. I don't know what would possess them to think that. I don't know what sales numbers and statistics they have access to that would lead them to that conclusion. But generally speaking, massive multi, probably billion dollar corporations do not make decisions like this lightly. But like the, but like Dylan Mulvaney's new face. Here is uh, a little bit of the video of Dylan Mulvaney announcing a sponsorship from Bud Light. By the way, I should just point out here, Dylan Mulvaney, a man who's pretended to be a woman for about a year is now sponsored by, here's a list, Bud Light. How, hey chat, does somebody want to go through and figure out how many extra words Ben has said in this video uh, that he didn't have to say if he had just said trans woman? Because he said man masquerading as a woman, man, man pretending to be a woman multiple times. Like, add up how many words he said that he would have otherwise not had to say if he just said trans woman. Tampax? Or trans person. Where? Where? Kate Spade? Kitchen Aid, in the blender, I guess. Uh, Plaza Hotel, Stella McCartney, and Crest. And Crest, well, I mean, the, is, is this person really moving product? I just have a question, like from a capitalistic perspective, is Dylan Mulvaney moving product? Apparently, Bud Light thinks so. So here's Dylan Mulvaney. I, I, it sounds like a lot of corporations think so. From my understanding, Dylan Mulvaney is really popular on TikTok. I don't watch her content, and I don't really know much about her, honestly, but I mean, She's pretty big on TikTok. That's pretty obvious. Her, her TikToks get hundreds of thousands of likes from what I've seen. So to get hundreds of thousands of likes on your TikToks, like your TikToks are getting millions of views. Mulvaney as a sponsored person by Bud Light. Hi. Impressive carrying skills, right? I got some Bud Lights for us. So I kept hearing about this Good thing boy. called March Madness, and I thought we were all just having a hectic month, but... It turns out it has something to do with sports, and I'm not sure exactly which sport, but either way, it's a cause to celebrate. This month I celebrated- Wait, the joke is literally that she doesn't know much about sports. Wait, they're, they're literally doing a meme. Holy shit, I didn't even know the details of this ad. The ad is literally a joke. The, the ad, the, the joke of the ad is literally that it's a trans woman who doesn't give a shit about sports. Joking about not knowing about March Madness or what it's about, but just being like, eh, still, the beer's good. Drink the beer. Like, that is literally the the joke of the ad. My favorite thing is when the right forgets that comedy exists. In my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story ah. to see how you can enjoy March Madness. I, I like how he did the little, ah, and then did like a little grin, like, that was so funny. With Bud Light and maybe win some money too. I'm sorry, but Ben, that is not, P Ben, Ben Shapiro can be funny, but that is not the type of funny that Ben Shapiro can be. Ew. Love ya. And yeah, then Dylan Mulvaney released another video <laughs> of himself in a- I like how he just didn't say anything. He was just like... How dare this person exist? Why am I not allowed to murder this person? Why can we not genocide all these minorities? He's so mad. Bathtub in a bathing suit blowing bubbles with the Bud Light.
So first of all, just want to point out here how stereotypically ridiculous it is for a man to pretend what? to be a woman and then use every ridiculous stereotype about women. Apparently what? women don't know. Okay, this is a pretty common uh, talking point from conservatives when they want to try to virtue signal some bizarre type of wokeness. Like, ha, gotcha, SJWs. Turns out you're the real misogynists. Being a trans woman is like woman face. You're just trying to do womanly stereotypes. And it's like, yeah, no shit. If you're trying to have society see you as a woman, you're generally going to fall into habits and behaviors that society stereotypically associates with women. That's the point. There was a time, by the way, when Ben Shapiro's argument for whether or not a trans person's uh, gender, like, identity should be respected um, and, like, pronouns should be used was based on, like, how much effort they put into, like, presenting as that thing. Like, Ben used to say that he would, like, like, oh, my problem is when a trans woman who looks like a man expects me to think they're a woman and call them a woman at first glance. That was, like, how we'd argue back then, but now it's, like, no matter how well you pass, or, like, how many surgeries you have, or how, like, literally, you could be, like, intersex, born with two X chromosomes, but were still born assigned male at birth, and then transitioned to the extent that, like, you are literally in every way biologically female, pretty much, and even then, Ben would find an excuse as to how you're still a man. You know what March Madness is? Did you know that? Did you know that no woman knows what March Madness is? You just thought it was a stressful month! How do women not find this utterly... Bizarre and insult. It's a joke. Ben, I, I understand that conservatives are very anti-humor and they can't handle the funny, but it's a joke. As a matter of fact, it was a misogynistic joke, if anything, which is extra funny. I, I don't understand. And who is the crowd for whom Bud Light is doing this? And the answer is, of course, all of their friends. They're doing this for the inner media. Their assumption is that there won't be a massive number of Bud Light consumers who look at this and go, I'm not buying Bud Light. Like, I'd rather just buy another crappy beer. Like, it's... It, they think that they can get away with this, culturally speaking. And pretty much... So this is the new go woke, go broke talking point is they did this woke thing and think they can get away with it culturally speaking. Remember, these people live and die in the culture war. You have to understand, guys, the reason why I talk so much about the culture war is because... Our enemies live for nothing but the culture war. Their lives are the culture war. Their stakes are the culture war. That's all they care about. Everything they push is through the culture war. That's, it's so fucking stupid, but it's what literally shapes all of our lives now. The word woke was literally something only said in BuzzFeed videos a couple years ago. Now there's the Stop Woke Act being pushed by Republicans. I'm sorry, but the, the culture war is now determining, like, the future of our lives in this country. All of the culture thinks this because they live in a magical bubble of their own making. This is, this is all nuttiness. Or non-nuttiness, as the case may be. But again, it is not restricted to Dylan Mulvaney. Apparently, nice according one. to Breitbart, pop star Lizzo's brand, Yiddy. According to Breitbart... Okay, so we're just... We're just going for it, huh? We're, we're just, we're, we're going all, I think that Ben will legitimately still stand by the Daily Wire when they're, when they're JQing. I think if Ben gets to the point where they start asking him to JQ, he'd do it. I, I genuinely don't think Ben, uh, is honest or, um, like a, a, I don't think he's acting honestly or in good faith anymore. I think at a certain point he was, but I think a while ago, he started to have to um, make his arguments and his beliefs a lot more uh, radical to appease the more hateful audience that has grown against trans people lately. He is launching shapewear for gender non-conforming communities. This includes chest binders for women and tucking thongs for men. I'm sure Yo. that that is a massive bestseller. Yiddy said, quote, when we say we support everybody, we mean it. Well, we believe in I radical... I, I love these conservatives, like, desperately arguing the things these massive corporations are doing. These massive multi-billion dollar corporations are doing aren't making the money. Meanwhile, by the way, Ben Shapiro literally made a movie that the whole point of it was to be anti-woke starring Gina Carano. It was like a bunch of, like, canceled Hollywood actors, um, ex-Hollywood actors. And uh, the movie ended up grossing 
Guess how much money? Guess how much money that movie made at the box office? Eight hundred and four dollars on its opening weekend. I'm sorry, Ben, but I don't think you have anywhere to speak from with this whole like go broke, go woke, whatever the fuck argument that you want to make here. Because you already went broke when you tried to make your own movie. Clearly, these woke Hollywood executives know what they're doing because they're making a lot more money off ticket sales than you are. Self-love for people of all gender identities, including the trans, non-binary, gender fluid, and gender non-conforming communities that have been chronically underserved. Nothing says radical self-love like uh, taping your up radical inside yourself. Radical self-love. That, 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 is, that, is that is the radical self-love. That is such a... That is such a fitting thing for a. I've I've never heard a conservative say that before, but like, that's my first time hearing the terms radical self love. But I love it. Um, of course, conservatives would find a way to demonize the concept of not hating yourself because remember, conservatives like will constantly shit talk at like ads about like ads where it's like athletic wear advertised towards uh like plus size people meanwhile they will complain non-stop about the existence of plus size people and like call them lazy for not getting into shape and it's like okay but why is it bad that products are made for them to wear while getting into shape so you're against ads that are advertising athletic wear towards plus size people but also you're against them being plus size and think they should get into shape. Like, what do you want them to go work out naked? Like, what are they supposed to fucking do? Like, there's, it's literally no, there's no winning scenario. They don't want fat people to get into shape. They want to have a completely acceptable group of people to be hateful towards. Conservative politics is based in needing a group of people. Most conservatives are people in a state in their lives where they are filled with hate, like self-hatred and spite. And, like, uh, just a lot of negative emotions, and they need somewhere to take it out on. It's why so many angsty teenage boys end up falling into conservatism so young. They've found an excuse to blame all their problems on a certain group of people, and they can literally engage as in as much vitriolic hate towards that group as possible publicly, and they get pats on the backs and kudos for it. That is why so many people are attracted to conservatism. It's the cruelty. Not only is cruelty like inherent to conservatism and just kind of like always there, sort of like as an elephant in the room to all of their talking points, but it is also a draw to conservatism as well. People that like cruelty are drawn to conservatism. Love that, that people have been seeking for, for literally ages. The tucking thong is what they've been looking for for ages. Or, you know, some, some instrument that crushes your breasts to your body if you're a woman. This is, this is how you perform radical self-love, guys. I know that you thought that that was actually, you know, seems like painful and unfortunate, but apparently that is an act of radical self-love. Now, all of this would just be a bizarre cultural moment, except for the fact it's being actively promoted by the federal government of the United States to whom you pay inordinate tax dollars. When you're running a business, your employees can create all kinds of fascinating and terrifying situations. You don't think about HR a lot when you first start a business because you're more worried about you know, providing goods and services to people. But then you get a little ways in, you got some employees, an and HR problems crop up. If you haven't actually gotten your HR in order, it can be a massive liability hole for you. This is why you should go to... Ba ba okay, so basically, this is a he's doing a sponsorship thing. Okay. Little, little instant out of nowhere, no warning sponsor. Read. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, you should know, by the way, like... The rainbow capitalism thing is fucking real. These corporations, like, I've literally seen companies that sponsor far-right Nazi YouTubers' uh, videos. Like, you'll see, like, a, um, I don't know, like, a fucking quartering video, uh, and he's sponsored by a popular uh, brand that, like, sponsors a lot of YouTubers. And then you see that same brand make a Pride Month post. While, like, while, meanwhile, a video they're sponsoring by the quartering is literally screaming about the existence of gay people in a new movie for kids. Like, none of it is genuine. It is it is pandering. When the right says it's pandering, they're not wrong. It is pandering. But it's not wrong because it is pandering to the wrong group of people, which is what they believe. It's wrong because it's, like, not valid. Or it's not um, sincere. They're just doing it as sort of like a, a ploy to make money. And while it may have a positive outcome, that's still, like, shitty to do, morally, I'd say. Like, just utilizing the oppression of a marginalized group to, 
like sell products. Not really, not really the most based behavior in my opinion. You can do for yourself, for your family. This coming year, really important. Preserve all those family memories. You go out into your garage and what you will see is a bunch of old VHS tapes. Do you even have a VCR anymore? No one has a VCR anymore. You see a bunch of old what film reels from your parents. About? That stuff has been moldering in the garage for a while and over time it degrades. What if you could preserve that stuff forever? I've done this for my parents several times with Legacy Box. I've done it. How many fucking ads? Two sponsorships? Back to back fucking sponsorships in one 12 minute video. Guys. Guys. I need you to understand that not only is the, are, are these right-wing figures funded by massive multi-billion dollar dark money groups, their fans are the most dedicated when it comes to donating and supporting them. Like, have you seen how much money through Patreon these right-wing figures make compared to equally sized or smaller left-wing figures? The right has more, like, grassroots funding when it comes to their content creators, and they have more dark money corporate funding. Which just leads them to having more money and power. It's why they can run their videos as ads on YouTube. Have you ever seen a BreadTube video run as an ad on YouTube? The only person I can think of that ever did that was Keffels, who ran like a video as an ad on YouTube. And it, and it like was one video for a very short period of time because it's so expensive. PragerU runs almost every video they make as an ad on YouTube. It's just too expensive. Daily Wire ads all over YouTube. Steven Crowder ads all over YouTube. The left does not have that kind of money and resources. The right has the money to literally astroturf figures into prominence. Abby Shapiro literally had more dislikes on every video than likes for a year before she started to have a positive ratio because the only views she got on her videos were Ben Shapiro paying to run ads for her videos on YouTube. You couldn't escape ads for her videos, so the comment section were all just people saying, can you get this dumb bitch's ads off of my algorithm? Like, can I stop getting this dumb bitch's ads running before my videos? And dislikes, until eventually enough conservatives were pushed the ads that she grew her own audience, and now her careers was completely astroturfed into existence. It's all them just having insane amounts of money and power. The only way, like, you can help with this is to support your favorite, like, progressive content creators. Even if it's not financially, just hitting the like button. Hit the like button. Do it now on my stream. Just support your favorite lefty content creators. If you see, like, any left-wing figure you follow, especially the smaller ones, are making content, Support it in any way that you can, okay? Because the right has so much money, they can just pay to win. We have to fight and play it, e like, fairly. Like, we have to actually make videos that do well on YouTube and get a lot of views and actually collaborate and work hard. The right can pay inordinate amounts of money to make every video they make run as an ad before a shit ton of videos so nobody can avoid the video. And everybody who may want to watch that content will be forced to see it. That's what the right can do. The left cannot do this. The left does not have these resources. And for myself also with Legacy Box, Legacy Box does an amazing job. Your family's special moments, if they were captured, okay, let's... Treasured... Just right there, selling... and this has gone completely right. unnoticed. It is it not only unnoticed, but Saturday marks the trans day of visibility. Because, by the way, I, I don't know if you noticed this, but trans people are, like, invisible. They're totally invisible. I mean, except for the fact that they now appear in literally every major television show and also every major ad campaign, including, like, Crest and Bud Light. They're uh, this is objectively not true. Um, this is just an instance of somebody who literally spends all their time complaining about every instance of a trans person existing in an ad thinking that every ad must be like that. So, no. I assure you, not every television- not literally every television show, and not literally every ad, as he said, is quote-unquote pandering to trans people, I assure you. In fact, as much as Ben Shapiro desperately tries to make it seem like this isn't the case, Republican lawmakers are heavily pushing to outlaw any access to gender-affirming care for adults. That's right. Adults, even if you're an adult who's, ooh, diamonds, even if you're an adult who is just being trans in the privacy of your own home and you're just like doing your own thing, you're not hurting anybody and you're not like bothering anyone, whatever that means, like 
even then, you are now, re like, pretty soon likely to be banned from having any legal access to gender-affirming, more diamonds, uh, uh, gender-affirming care. Because it's not that they have an issue with trans people being too visible or trans people being too shoved in their, in their faces. They've always had a problem with the existence of trans people. Ben Shapiro started his career talking about trans people, simply arguing that trans people do not have, like, a philosophical right to exist. That philosophically their existence is abhorrent and they do not have a right to be viewed as, like, valid humans. That if you... That if you were to validate a trans person's existence, you are actively engaging in support of delusion, and you are a bad person for doing this. Like, it's not just that they try so hard to make it seem like they're the non-judgmental ones, and it's the left that's trying to push everything on them. But they actively say that if you... But then on the same hand, they will say that if you validate a trans person, you are a bad person for, the, like, enabling degeneracy or enabling mental illness. Like, just being supportive of trans people makes you a bad person in these people's minds. And yet, somehow, we're the ones pushing the pro-trans shit on the right, I guess. The left is the one that pushes this on you. It's like, no. No, clearly not. That is not what's happening here. You've been complaining about it forever. Utterly invisible. We need a trans day of visit because they're invisible, right? I mean, forget the fact that we actively have trans flags flying from federal buildings. No Super okay. invisible. It's just a secret that no one talks about, except for how it's been the talk of the town for literally a decade at this point. This so is we, like we need to, we need th this is the most Reddit nerd like th this is the most nerd emoji Reddit fedora tip semantics argument I've ever heard. <laughs> trans day of visibility. Hmm. What? Trans people are invisible now. They need to be seen. It's like okay, you're you're very like. Anybody with half a brain cell and even the slightest bit of knowledge about, like, activist phrasing understands what it means to be visible as a marginalized group and what that's referring to. That, like, for me, maybe this isn't the case for a lot of, like, Gen Z conservatives that are, you know, getting radicalized these days, but when I fell down the chud rabbit hole... For me, one of the things that, like, fundamentally started to shake my resolve and, and trust in these, like, content creators and these political pundits was the realization that they are literally incapable of engaging with the left honestly. They can't define woke. They can't honestly, like, say what it is the left actually believes. They can't even, like bite their tongue and say the word trans woman because saying trans woman is too nice they don't hold political values they hate groups of people their political values are these are the groups we hate and we and we need to be as cruel to as possible so to just saying the word trans woman is nice it is a the slightest level of like acceptance or like acknowledgement of a group's existence that is too nice their goal their entire like uh uh you know end game is maximizing cruelty towards this, these groups so they just can't do that we need to foster the the trans ideology the lie that boys can become girls and we need to do that without reference to the fact that the radicalization <laughs> what about the lie that uh, girls can become boys. You'll notice, by the way, that the right really doesn't like talking about trans men. They really like pretending trans men don't exist because they aren't very threatening, despite the fact that even when a trans man did a school shooting recently, they still kept on vaguely referring to the gender of the shooter. Like, they wouldn't say if the shooter was a trans man or a trans woman because they wanted to give the impression that the shooter was a trans woman. Because that plays more effectively into the narrative. Because in their minds, a trans man is a woman. In their view, it is a woman who is delusional that shot up a school. And that is not as scary as leading people to assume that it was a delusional man who shot up the school in the name of trans rights. That is what they want their audience to believe. Even if they have to imply it, because they can't just, like, outright state something. Like, like if they just said, yes, the, the shooter was a trans woman, like, that, that would be too blatant of a lie for them to get away with. They could get away with it, for sure, but I don't think they think they could. That's a little uh, too extreme of a lie of the for them. Certain members of the trans community, by the lie, 
that there is a genocidal attempt to kill them as opposed to not accepting the lie that they are in fact members of the opposite sex that actively right now the um so for one michael knowles has literally who is a like co-worker and employee of ben shapiro's has literally looked in the camera saying we want to eradicate transgenderism not to mention the politicians that Ben Shapiro supports. The conservative politicians are actively pushing laws in states like Florida, Michigan, Alabama, and Tennessee, and a bunch of other states that will actively criminalize identifying as trans and getting uh, any form of medical treatment as an adult that would affirm your gender identity. Not only that, but they are also trying to criminalize presenting if you are a trans person presenting as the identity you identify with around children because they of course believe trans people being trans is pedophilic inherently speaking and so if a trans person exists around a kid then they're a pedophile and they're engaging in child grooming and so they want to make that a criminal action as well and they're actively pushing for it right now oh also um i believe it is alabama that is pushing to make uh this form of quote-unquote grooming a uh, federal crime that is punishable by the uh, 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 death penalty, and uh, that same person is pushing for the death penalty to be uh, carried out using gas chambers in that same state. So, you put all of it together and we've got a guy who thinks that trans people, we've got an elected official who thinks that trans people presenting publicly as their identity they identify with is pedophilia, who is advocating for what that they're calling that as pedophilia to be considered a death penalty worthy offense and for the death penalty to be the death penalty to be carried out with gas chambers full on zyklon b gas chambers like the nazis use the same gas the same exact gas the same method by the way the way that they kill you that way is they put you in a room they tie you to a chair and they combine a solution together that that pushes the gas into the air and they tell you hey uh you might want to breathe in and out very deeply and quickly. It kills you faster. Because if you don't, like, if you don't do that, then you'll start hacking up and coughing up blood and mucus, and you'll choke to death via drowning on, on land. So, like, really inhale that shit fast, or you'll die very slowly and painfully. So that, that's how the Zyklon B gassing works. You have, to, you have to inhale very quick and fast and quick, or you basically just drown to death on land in your own blood and, and uh and mucus in your lungs that's how they kill you and uh that is what they're act the the gas chamber is used for death penalty in some states but they're actively pushing it um to be used on trans people who identify and present as trans in front of children in some red states so yes this is genocidal is a bad agenda and a dangerous agenda but joe biden's going to double down on this thing this is a culture war he apparently wants he thinks this is a culture war he is going to win he does the left yeah i, I will say that that pretty much all of politics domestically, internationally at this point, is just a matter of reactionary idiocy. It's like the, the left has decided that because they don't like Donald Trump, now boys are girls. I mean, sit back and listen as Ben Shapiro just gives away the entire conservative game plan, I guess, but pretends like that's what the left's doing. Remember, every conservative accusation is an admission of guilt. And they're going to push that in the aftermath of a girl who said that she was a boy murdering a bunch of Christian school kids. So Joe Biden who has spent pretty much no time talking about the victims in Nashville, but has spent an awful lot of time over the course of the last week talking about the victimization of trans people. He put out a tweet saying, quote, on transgender day of visibility, we want you to know that we see you just as you are, made in the image of God and deserving of dignity, respect, and support. We'll never stop Days. working to create a world where you won't have to be brave just to be yourself. The number of absurd, bizarre twistings and lies in just this I like how it's just the most milk toast, like accepting statement of trans people existing, and he, now Ben has to act super overly offended. Like there were so many lies in there, as if trans people have to be brave and modern. He's gonna like now start saying as if trans people have to be brave in modern day society. Trans people are basically treated like royalty now. If you're trans, you're basically you have a velvet carpet rolled out for you, and everybody treats you like you're stunning and brave. Like that's what he's about to say. One three sentence statement is amazing, amazing. Let's just start right from the beginning there. On transgender day of visibility, we want you to know that we see you just as you are. You actively do not. You actively do not. Hey, you, you say that you see people. Okay, can we really quickly, because we're doing a, um, a pro trans segment and Ben is just kind of pretending like any data at all agrees with any of the positions he holds. 
Um, Socialism Done Left actually made a goaded ass uh, little, I don't think Socialism Done Left actually made it, but Socialism Done Left posted it today. And it's a really good, um, it's a really good video. It's basically just a condensed 60 second own on conservatives. And it starts with this like glass paneling of like Jesus. So it's for conservatives to click on thinking it's going to be some chud shit. But then this is what ends up being. Um, we can pause each one if you want to, but try to like, y you can see each thing that flashes on screen is evidence val uh, like validating the existence of trans people, like studies, medical data, etc. Stuff like that. So yeah, in the end there, it was just flashing literally all of the uh, reputable medical organizations and scientific organizations that uh, all unanimously agree that uh, trans people are valid and all of the assertions the left makes in regards to trans people are also valid and true. Um, and the right are literally just lying to their audiences of very naive uh, and stupid people uh, to convince them that uh, some magical massive amount of data that proves that the right is actually tr correct exists somewhere um they'll never sort it source it or cite it because you know it doesn't exist um but they pretend it exists because you know they 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 don't have anything they they have to pretend like there's some level of like data to back up what they stand for because they can't they can't just i mean Ben Shapiro has to operate in a higher level of logic bro, uh, you know, argumentation than trans people aren't valid because God says so. He has to pretend like there is some truth derived by human science that agrees with him. But there is none. There just isn't. He is unanimously, hilariously wrong. Well, as they are, no. You see them as they insist that you see them. That is not as they are. As they are implies an objective reality that you can identify and notice. Okay, well, that's the opposite of what you're doing. Made in the image of God and deserving of dignity, respect, and support. Every human being is made in the image of God. Not every human choice is a godly choice. Made in the image of God. You know, if you're going to cite the... I, I love that one meme where it's like, God, when he when he meets conservatives, why is nobody respect loving thy neighbor? I specifically requested this. The verse, at least cite the entire verse. Okay, like this drives me absolutely up, up a wall. As somebody who actually believes in the Bible and somebody who actually knows the Bible and reads it in the original Hebrew, let me just point out to you at this point that the okay, verse he's explicitly rejects what he is saying right now about the idea that men can be women and women can be men. Okay, the actual verse just to read it in Hebrew to you. Oh, no. Is, Ba'ivra Elohim, et ha'adam b'tzalmo, b'tzalem Elohim, bara oto, zachar unekeva, bara otam. Zachar unekeva. Okay, so for those who don't speak Hebrew, the literal verse is, I knew is, what that meant. So, God created man in his own image. In the I image of God, he created him. I knew Male that. Male and female, he created them. Yeah, I knew that. He, he said it's the beginning of the verse. Okay, I did say earlier in the stream that I thought Ben Shapiro operated in a higher level of logic, bro, than citing God said so as an argument. But, um, yeah, he's he's saying God said so as an argument. <clears throat> uh, literally all that Biden said was that all everyone is made in God's image and God loves everyone. That's literally that's literally all that Biden said. And these are objectively true statements in the Christian canon. That God made every human in his image and loves every human, even the sinners. That is objectively true in biblical canon, both in the um, Jewish Bible and in the uh, uh, Christian Bible. Zan only misses when it's a better dunk to be wrong. That is true. That is unironically true. The only time I ever miss in a prediction is when it makes me look even better and the person I'm dunking on look even worse for me to be wrong on that. Like, I, like, it, 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 made, it makes Ben look even worse that I was wrong.
first, but he can't even get to the end of the verse without debunking himself. It's unbelievable. And then, of course, you know, we, we, we have to create a world where you won't have to be brave just to be yourself. What do you mean brave to be yourself? Here it comes. Being yourself is like the least brave thing. In fact, it's almost unavoidable. But he, he said... He said, a world where instead of having to be brave, you can be yourself. That he didn't say being yourself is brave. I mean, in the case of trans people, it is, but that's not what his sentence meant. It meant we don't want being trans to have to, like out as trans to have to be a brave action. We just want it to be a thing like trans people exist. And there's like, it's not a big deal. They just. They're just there, you know? They just, they're just doing their thing, living their lives like anybody else. There wouldn't need to be all this, like, political discourse or anything like that if trans people were just kind of left alone and people didn't, like, hyperfixate on the validity of trans people. Like, if you just met a trans person and they were like, Hi, I, I'm Sally. I go by she, her pronouns. And you were like, Okay, I, I don't really understand this whole trans thing, but all right, I'll be polite. And, th and that was just the end of it, and you just kind of dropped it from there. There would literally not be any of this crazy political turmoil. The entire, entire culture war against trans people has always been a right shot first situation. The right has always shot first. Every single thing the right tries to use as evidence that like the, the trans community is like bad or whatever has always been a response to the right's actions. It has always been a response to the insanely evil and hateful actions and words of the right. It's very hard not to be yourself. It's actually quite easy to be yourself. The question is whether you are making good or bad life decisions and whether we are incentivizing people to do damaging things to themselves and their own bodies. But this is the agenda that is now being pushed and fostered. Remember guys, Ben Shapiro a few years ago argued that he didn't care what you did as long as you were an adult. Now he's fully in favor of like demonizing any trans person, regardless of if they're an adult or not, for being trans. Uh, he now considers that decision, quote unquote, to be trans, uh, a, a one that should be, uh, uh, you know, looked down upon and criticized heavily, even if you are an adult. No longer is it like the land of the free, love America, do what you want as long as you're not hurting anybody. Being trans in their world is hurting people because of, in their view, if you are in their world, if you are a trans person. And you identify, let's say you were born male, but you, you like transitioned to female. In their world, they have a right to know your original birth sex because that's what they actually consider you because they do not, they literally cannot fundamentally understand the concept um, of gender and sex not being the same thing or the complexity of either of these two things. They can't, they don't understand it. They haven't been educated on it. Or in the case of Ben Shapiro, he probably knows, but he's a lying grifter um, who's doing it for money. For a lot of these people, their mindset is literally that if they meet a trans person, that trans person is lying to them or forcing them to change their language by implicitly insisting the politest thing to do is to accept their gender identity. They view the existence of trans people because what if you run into a trans person and you end up being seen as the asshole in public for not using their pronouns? The existence of trans people creates that risk. It creates the risk of a group in society that is accepted that if you are rude to, you are the asshole. They desperately have to create a political argument out of the validity of this group of people so their continued cruelty and bigotry towards them can be seen as a political point of contention and opinion. You're allowed to have your own opinion. Your own opinion about whether or not a certain group of people, a minority group, should be allowed to exist? And you're allowed to have power while also having your controversial opinion on this? It's very frustrating, but th th that's basically how these people think. If you're a trans person, your existence is an imposition on them because either A, if you pass well enough, you're lying, or B, if you don't pass well enough that they notice that you're trans, then you are compelling their speech. You are enslaving them to be polite to you in a way that they don't want to be. They want to be hateful and mean to you. But if the left succeeds and acceptance of trans people becomes 
prominent and, and you know, expected, then they will be seen as social outcasts for continuously engaging in, um, uh, you know, rude behavior towards trans people. They need to make this a, it needs to continue to be not a discussion of like, hey, by the way, this is just a group of people that want to survive. It needs to be a argument as to whether or not this group of people is part of an ideology that is dangerous. Trans people aren't a minority group when the right wing talks about them. They're an ideology. Because if the right can ever seeds the ground that, the, that trans people are a minority group, that they're born that way, that like they can't change or like that, that that's just who they are and there's nothing wrong with it. If that if they ever seed that ground, everything they've ever said immediately is genocidal. If they ever let go of their idea that trans people are just ideologues, everything they've said is genocidal without a single hint of doubt. That is why they maintain that position so strongly by the radical left. Karine Jean-Pierre makes this even clearer. She tweeted out over the weekend that our wonderful press secretary, quote, this year's Transgender Day of Visibility comes in the midst of a historic wave of attacks on transgender kids. Oh, you know what it also came in the midst of? It came in the midst of dead Christian kids at a Nashville school. I don't see you commenting on that, though. Weird. It's very, very strange. Nearly 600. By the way, like, the right has taken a, uh, a penchant to saying that any trans or pro-trans person who made a tweet about Trans Day of Visibility or any tweet that wasn't about the the Nashville school shooting, uh, that means that they endorse the shooting. So the right's like screaming and demanding that every trans affiliated or supporting institution out there denounces the shooting because it was done by a trans person. To give you an idea, by the way, guys, this is... Again, the right fights tooth and nail against any comparison of trans people to any other marginalized group. If you compare them to any other race, if you compare them to any other, like, to gay people even, a lot of them will lose their shit because a lot of them wouldn't even say this stuff about, like, gay people and lesbians. Trans people are uniquely sort of not as accepted uh, as far as, like, sexuality and, and gender uh, minority groups go, right? Like, gay people, lesbians... For the most part, if the average person heard Ben say the things he's saying about trans people, about gay people and lesbians, Ben's channel would be deleted in a day. If, if Ben said the things he says about, like, gay and lesbian people that he says about trans people, they're all groomers and pedophiles and they're destroying our culture. Like, if he said that, his channel would be deleted in a day. The amount of, like, overwhelming support for gay people, uh, like, in comparison to trans people, is insane. Like, broad society overwhelmingly supports gay people more than trans people. Trans people, though, the right has managed to keep this this insane uh, narrative, uh, uh, you know, out there that, like, trans people aren't a minority group. They are a... They are people who subscribe to an ideology that gender and sex aren't the same thing. And so it's not a thing you're born as. It's not, like, them doing a thing to make the, their, like brains good it's them it's like being a, a leftist it's them subscribing to an ideology because if you hate people who subscribe to a certain ideology you just hate the ideology not a certain group of people nothing you say is 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 genocidal they can say they hate communists they hate leftists they hate liberals all day in the same way they can say they hate trans activists it is a group an ideology an ideological group that they hate but the second that you make the comparison or you try to get them to agree that trans people are a marginalized group of people, they'll lose their shit because everything they say about trans people when applied to any minority group is overtly genocidal. My favorite is, um, my favorite thing is taking posts by conservatives talking about trans people and replacing trans with Jew or with black. And seeing how clearly Nazi it is. Like, you'll see 
the Jews are molesting our kids and pushing a groomer agenda. And it's like, okay, so like you literally replace trans with Jew and you immediately get like the most overt Nazi propaganda you've ever seen, like genocidal, uh, conspiratorial, uh, like all of it, all of it. Yeah. And then there's the Sansol clip, which is like the reverse of that. It's when liberals refuse to believe that, uh, the right is genocidal about, uh, 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 trans people you can take Nazi propaganda from like Mein Kampf and whatnot and replace Jew with trans and it sounds identical to the way conservatives talk about trans people today it sounds identical to the way conservatives talk about trans people today when you take quotes from Mein Kampf about the Jews and replace Jew with trans it's the same talking points it's fucking wild who would have thought it would work vice versa Anti-LGBTQ bills have been filed so far this year in state houses across the country, and more than half target young people, says Karina. Does anyone have the Sansol clip? We should play the Sansol clip. It's a really good example of what I'm talking about here, of, like, how close it all sounds to Nazi propaganda. Like, how literally it is Nazi propaganda if instead of this, what they argue is a I ideology, which is trans people, uh, it is replaced with, like, any other group that's a minority group. That's really the core of it, by the way. The right cannot let go of the fact that trans people, in their mind, aren't a minority. Because if they admit that, they're done. A lot of them are done. Oh, here it is. Guy replaces Jew with trans along with other words from a letter in uh, Der, Sturm Der Stummer in 1935. A publication that called for extermination of Jews in th 1933. The and Streamer doesn't recognize genocidal rhetoric. This is basically... You're hearing a Nazi publication talking about the Jews, but the person reading it off replaced Jew with trans. And uh, this this lib streamer, uh, who's like a massive uh, DGG or type, uh, argued, no, it's not genocidal because he's really dedicated to the idea that there is no trans genocide. So uh, he didn't even stop to think about it. For let's just, let's just watch. It's really good. Let's just watch. I'm not even gonna spoil it. Letter from a girl from Tampa. Dear Matt Walsh, I attend a well-known Christian high school in Tampa. Unfortunately, we still have a lot of trans students. And unfortunately, it's customary that many girls are close friends with these trans. On special days, when we wear our uniforms to school, these girls in uniforms walk around the schoolyard arm in arm with their trans friends. If someone wants to make it clear to the relevant Christian students their conduct, they say trans people are people too. And Eva is a really modest, respectable, nice girl. The bad thing is their parents are also the same opinion. I consider such friendships to be very dangerous because the trans subtly but surely corrode the girl's soul with their ruinous views. At least in most cases, a 14-year-old girl is too inexperienced to see through the deviousness and actual intent of the trans friends. I myself am barely 15 years old and therefore incapable of proving to my classmates how stupid their opinions are and that pity for trans is pure suicide. Therefore, I'd like to ask you, can't your blog do more about it? It'd certainly be successful because girls are far too unenlightened about the details of trans ideology. Normal boys certainly don't have trans friends anymore. And if this isn't the case yet with girls, it's only because no one is there to thoroughly explain everything to them. Ursula from Tampa. The reply from Matt Walsh is, "Dear oh, no, little we're, Ursula." We're hearing his response to how long is his response? No, no, it's like it's like a two sentence. Section. Okay, cool. But, Dear little Ursula, your letter made Daily Wire happy. You're a girl that a time like ours needs. Even though you're only 15 years old, you are much more advanced in your knowledge of the trans ideology than people older than you. Always speak up freely. Okay, do you feel like this article is genocidal? No, it sounds very hateful, though. Um. What if I told you that I took an article from Der Sturmer and just replaced Jew with trans? Uh, it sounds very hateful, but it's not necessarily genocidal. So, so a article from Der Sturmer in 1935 about Jewish people where I just literally just replaced certain words is not genocidal to you. But, uh, do you think that this is a gotcha? Do you know what you genocide know, no, I think means? This is, I think this is an amazing gotcha. I think that it shows that you are incapable of... Sansol never recovered from this one. Uh, okay, recognizing so is, genocidal okay. intent okay, so, when it's directly in front of you. So what... Uh, that was so good. That was so good. But like, even in that, in the quote there, that, that was read off there, how similar did that literally Der... Did that literal Der Sturmer quote... A Nazi publication, like literally in the in, near the peak 
of of the ramp up of the Nazi rise in Germany, um, like how much of that when replacing Jew with trans was literally identical to what you've heard come out of Matt Walsh's mouth, Ben Shapiro's mouth, even Blair White's mouth. All these popular conservative figures saying the same shit, especially the stuff about how young girls aren't equipped to uh, understand the deviousness of uh, the trans uh, uh, agenda. Literally replacing Jewish with trans, and it's word for word the uh, uh, the uh, trans uh, gender, what's it called? The... Um, uh, uh, rapid onset gender dysphoria argument. It's all Nazi propaganda. It is just okay in our society to be a Nazi, but to want to not to like genocide trans people. And that's your goal. Like online right now, as long as you like code it in enough ambiguous uh, uh, euphemism, you're allowed to be in favor of that because trans people aren't seen as a marginalized group, as a group of people who are born a certain way and they can't change that. And like they have dysphoria or they have like some sort of incongruence with their assigned gender at birth and they're actively pursuing a uh, transition, whether it be medical, uh, social or both, in order to feel like they can actually live in their own skin. They don't see it that way. They need to see it as a bunch of people uh, subscribing to an ideology. Jean-Pierre. As the president has said, transgender youth are the bravest people we know. The bravest. They're the bravest. So oh, first hey. of all, transgender. Hey, 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 chat. Remember earlier when I said that Ben Shapiro was going to argue that trans people now are treated like royalty and they're they're called like stunning and brave and all that? He's doing the thing. I, I called out exactly what he was going to argue. Remember, guys, conservative propaganda is very, very, very predictable. Okay? After you've seen enough of it, you can start to form like a, a general... Like, you can kind of figure out what the formula is for a conservative uh, uh, talking point, right? Like, for example, um, I have a video coming out in probably the next day or two about a new conspiracy theory the right is starting about AOC claiming that an alt account uh, of hers on Twitter was supposedly, or a supposed alt account of hers on Twitter was uh, threatening Matt Walsh's life. But the thing is... And everyone's running with this. Ben Shapiro's running with it. Matt Walsh is running with it. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Like, all of the right wing on Twitter are running with it. Like, they genuinely think this is uh, AOC's uh, uh, alt account. You can literally go and see, like, screenshots posted of the original interaction. Basically, an insane, like, I'm pretty sure he's a, like, a, a, a black separatist. Like, a... Um, uh, 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 what's, what's the word? I'm, I'm forgetting the, a uh, hotep. I'm pretty sure he's a hotep, uh, uh, Nico House, c replied to a retweet of a, uh, AOC post by an individual named Zaza Demon. So Nico House replies to the AOC post, but it tags Zaza Demon. Because they were replying to Zaza Demon's retweet. Mind you, Zaza Demon, the supposed AOC alt account, Zaza is weed. Like, good nugs. The, the name's literally Weed Demon. They're claiming that AOC has an alt account called Weed Demon. Anyway, basically, Nico House replies to AOC's tweet, but tagging Zaza Demon with a very vague conspiratorial insult at AOC, claiming essentially that supporting Ukraine is supporting Nazis. And so thinking that this insult was... Because it's very vague and it's a conspiracy insult. Like, it's, it's a right-wing insult to AOC. The insult itself isn't even based in reality. So the person responding to it, Zaza Demon's like, what, when did I support Nazis? And Nico House decides to say, holy shit, this is AOC's alt. This person replied, that AOC accidentally replied on her alt. And so a bunch of conservative accounts start, like, going after this random Twitter user, Zaza Demon. And so Zaza Demon deactivates, and they start digging up a bunch of screenshots of Zaza Demon, um, like, making death threats to Matt Walsh. And Zaza Demon's just some random person. Like, it, it's not AOC, so I don't, I don't care about Zaza Demon death-threatening Matt Walsh. I really don't care. Um, and yeah, like the, the, uh, like it's literally just a massive boomer moment. And the right is starting a huge conspiracy about it. We're going to hear about AOC's death threats on her alt account 
weed demon for years from the right. And it all started from a massive boomer moment. I personally can't wait till a conservative brings this up in a debate with me. And I remember the actual context of where they dreamt up this conspiracy theory from, where the lie started. It, it's so nice being able to see where a popular conservative lie starts. Like watching the new conspiracy theory that will trick, no doubt, hundreds of thousands of American conservatives into thinking AOC is a violent, like, weed addict people will be convinced by this and we got to witness the beginning of the rights lie i need you guys to understand how important it is that we on the left constantly get to see ourselves be reassured in how correct we are the right actively before our very eyes is shamelessly shamelessly constructing lies in our plain view to use for their propaganda and we just get to sit there and watch as they like maniacally like a bunch of like super villains in their layer of evil come up with the new conspiracy theory they're going to use to trick a bunch of suckers into voting for them you know what's even funnier they're doing it with the ai stuff too and even figures with of like massive uh repute among the right are also doing it um my favorite has to be eric trump um, his cope tweet about Donald Trump. So he tweeted this out. Because Donald Trump's getting arraigned today. He tweeted out one of a kind and he posts this picture. And like, you know, it's like, holy shit, damn. Trump had a lot of supporters behind him walking with him to the courthouse. They really didn't want to see him get ar arrested. If you look really closely, though, you can see it's very clearly AI. Like particularly the flags being all fucked up is a good sign. The faces are all smudgy and weird. The hands are, in a lot of cases, like giant one fingers for the hand. And you can look down to the comments of this and see a shit ton of boomers genuinely falling for it and thinking that this was a genuine picture. Like, look at those brave patriots standing up for our true president. Uh, the the, the uh, leftist fascists don't stand a chance. Like, those are genuinely the comments that post is getting. And, like, you have to understand, we, we are continuously given the opportunity to reassure, reassure ourselves, yeah, we're on the right side of history. We are legitimately going up against objectively evil liars who are trying to warp reality and trick masses of people into allowing them to continue to hold power while they do everything possible to maximize their own gains while also maximizing the optimal amount of death, misery, and suffering for as many minorities as possible while they're doing it all. Like, especially the more history you know on top of that, like, so you can see, like, that they've been doing this for a long time and it's part of, like, a never-ending pattern... Um, they've been doing this for generations, then you fully realize the right genuinely is the like a group of evil. Unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of centrists that have been full-heartedly like, convinced that the right and the left are like equally crazy, they're equally like tribalistic and just care about their team winning, but on like one side's fighting against a genocidal fucking uh, a media sphere that has billions of dollars in dark mon money funding. The other side is literally just a bunch of people asking not to have their rights taken away. And they can be a little cringy while they're doing it. And the centrists are convinced these sides are equally, equally bad in their view. We saw it with Critical. We saw it with uh, train wrecks. Like, these centrist, more normie content creators that are really popular, when they do get into politics, you can tell they see the left and the right as pretty much equally crazy and equally bad. Because all politics are bad in their view. A lot of these, like, types of people, their only politics is being anti-politics. Under youth, like five-year-olds who say they are transgender, is a lie. Those are parents who are pressuring their kids into making decisions they're not qualified to make and have no basis to make. But they are the bravest people. Literally the. We're not talking about, like, members of SEAL Team 6 going and killing back. The bravest Braver people than the you troops. know are kids who are sexually confused and gender confused and whose parents have decided to put them in the public about this sort of thing. Gender confused, 
For those that don't know, that's also what they used to call it um, back in the 90s and 80s and 70s and before with gay people. If you were gay or bi um, and you were a kid, you were called confused and you were sent to a conversion therapy camp where they would oftentimes engage in torture. Like essentially what uh, conversion therapy tends to essentially boil down to is um, like, let's say you've got a gay person, like a gay dude. You would show him something that would make a gay person horny. And then if they show any sign whatsoever of being turned on, you introduce pain. Um, you torture them in response to any positive response whatsoever to, uh, like, gay imagery. You torture them and make them associate uh, any gay imagery. Like, say, if you've got a guy and they see an image of a gay man, they would associate a penis or any image of a gay man with the pain that they received in conversion therapy. And so instead of having a positive sexual response to, um, you know, a, a man naked, they would remember their torture. They would have a PTSD attack, basically. They would have a, a moment of remembering their trauma of being tortured, and that would be the only response they could have to seeing uh, someone of the same sex. They no longer can, you know, have a... a that, that's the idea behind it. But the, even then, it doesn't end up working. It just leaves a bunch of tortured kids still gay, but tortured... Uh, going into adulthood and then they resent their family and they and they end up, you know, becoming very militant lefties because they were tortured as kids for being gay. Um, and those same kids were all called confused. The term for them was confused. They were sent to conversion camps because they were confused. And now we have the right nowadays calling trans people gender confused and saying that they need to get therapy to be happy in their own bodies. What they mean by this every single time when you ask them what therapy are you talking about, they outright admit it's conversion therapy, which not only has never been demonstrated to even work, but is literally just torture. The idea, like they're literally just advocating for the torture of trans kids. To transgender folks across this country, says KJP, this administration has your back. This administration has your, again, didn't see a lot of tweets from uh, KJP about the names of the kids who were killed in Nashville. That, of course, is utterly irrelevant. This has become government policy. Now, this would be a good time for, norm, uh, for, for an American people that actually would like a normal definition of male and female to prevail, to come together. But that would require our politics to not be completely insane. All right, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. To come together. What do you mean by that, Ben? What do you mean by that? You just, the right just lost a couple of elections literally tonight. So clearly the will of the people is not to see the right in power pushing their... Like, I, I, you guys have to know, though, like, even if society isn't very pro-trans, society isn't anti-trans enough that this culture war can go on forever. Like, at the end of the day, people can only, like, be fear-mongered about trans people so much before they either A don't meet any trans people and realize this is just an issue being blown out of proportion because there's not really that many trans people in their area. So it's like, they don't really meet any trans people and it's like, okay, but like, where are they? Like, is this really an issue? I've never seen it. Or they end up meeting trans people and they realize that trans people are okay people and they're, they, they quickly realize that the bias they've been given by the right-wing media they consume is wrong and they fall out of it. Over time... The American people are going to get bored or realize the, the anti-trans shit is, is bullshit. This wave of hyper, like, genocidal, hateful rhetoric towards trans people is not going to last forever. It's going to stop and seriously ramp down in the near future. Like, it's getting old. The right are losing elections. The Republicans tonight lost, I believe it was two elections. They lost a Senate seat. I believe it was, and they lost a governorship, right? A Democrat got elected governor, and I think uh, the Democrats won a Senate seat? What? Not a Senate seat. No, it was a... What was it? Um, fuck, I forgot. I, I don't remember. The, the, the Democrats got two big wins tonight, at least, um, from what I'm hearing in chat. And the right got blown the... Yeah, Supreme Court. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Supreme Court. Thank you. Um, yeah, Wisconsin Supreme Court. You got it. You got it. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, the, the And the right got absolutely blown the fuck out in the midterms as well. To be clear, I honestly don't think the right's going to do that well in the 2024 election. As big as the right-wing culture war is online right now, I feel like it's burning out. They didn't do well in the midterms, and the right... Like, Republicans come out and vote no matter what. It doesn't matter how small the election is. 
Democrats are the ones that don't come out to vote unless it's a massive, huge presidential election where, like, you know, somebody they really don't like is the enemy, like Trump. If it comes down to Trump and Biden again in 2024, I think Biden's taken it away at this point. Like, Trump's fan base isn't growing. That's the thing. Besides, like, immigrants, which ironically enough are more likely to vote Trump if they're wealthy and and, and white, especially. Like, I, I mean, other than, like, immigration, there's really not that much growth to the Republican voter base. It's just been dwindling. Yeah, the Republican voter base has always been shrinking. Zan, do you think their insane rhetoric is motivating libs to vote against them? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, 100%. How many, like, liberals do you think have, like, a gay or trans friend who is encouraging them to vote hard blue in the next election because of how bad things have gotten? It's what happened in 2020, and it's going to happen even harder in 2024. The right wasn't going this hard against trans people legislatively when uh, Trump was in office. GOP would be non-existent without the Electoral College, filibuster, etc. Yeah, they, they have a lot of loopholes and, and bendings of the rules to make sure they maintain power. Let me actually see. Total number of Republican votes uh, by election. I want to see, like, if the total has dropped or if the per capita has dropped. Because Trump lost the popular vote in 2016. Okay, let's look from where it would be, like, most relevant from, like, I guess 1970 forward is when I, I would guess that, like, the party system would be the most relevant to today. Um, that's where I have the most knowledge about when the Republicans started pulling their Republican shit. Um, in 1972, Republican voters outnumbered Democrats by nearly half, by nearly 50% in 1972. Republicans outnumbered Democrats in total popular vote count. In 1976, Democrats actually barely outnumbered Republicans in the total popular vote. Literally just barely, maybe by like 10%. Then in 1980, Republicans outnumbered the Democrats by maybe a fifth of the votes in popular vote. And in 1984, the Republicans once again pull a massive popular vote win pulling roughly a third of, uh, of total popular votes in the 1980s. And in 1988, the Republicans barely pull away a win with, the Demo with them pulling out, like, roughly 10% more, uh, more votes than the, uh, the Democrats did in 1988. If we skip forward, though, to the 90s, to when we really started to see like a lot of marginalized groups actually start to engage in activism, uh, advocating for like hardcore, like you start to have the internet, TV, culture, hardcore pushing like activist rhetoric to the masses. Um, and like the ability for like the truth to be mass disseminated to the population, particularly when it comes to like the lies of the right. We also had the end of the Reagan era as well. You had Watergate and that whole scandal as well. Just a lot of stuff happening, being televised, brought to the attention of the public. The Republicans are starting to have their shit called out. The 90s was the beginning of the end for the Republicans. So in the 90s, in 1992, the Democrats pulled away with about as many more votes as uh, winning with as many more votes as they won as they lost from in 1988. So they basically had a full switch over one election, a full switch of the demographic voting in the popular vote in America. And, and from this point on, besides the 2004 election since then, continuously the democrat uh, popular vote has continuously risen the last time the popular vote for democrats has uh, been the highest though actually no um the highest one was 2020 it was really high for obama too but uh 2020 was the highest it was lower in 2016 because of hillary but overall the amount of Democrat voters is rising, like, sharply, too. And it, it seems like it's exponential. Look at this chart. This is the most recent election. Compared to 2016, 
and that compared to 2008 with Obama, Obama was super fucking popular. If you remember what Obama popular, like what things looked like in America when Obama was running for, for president, this is what the voter demographics looked like back then in total popular vote count. This is how things look now. Sorry, here and here. Yeah, my bad. Sorry, 2012, yeah. Like, we're we're seeing a pretty sharp increase in Democrat voters. Republicans are steadily on the decline. And there's no reason to assume this isn't going to continue as the right gets more and more desperate to hold power. And as the left continues to take positions such as legalizing weed, and the right continues to take positions like, you know, criminalizing gay marriage again, um, yeah, they're, they're going to continue to lose out on voters. Uh, it, to try to claim that the right are actually this, like, silent majority in America is downright delusional. Not to mention, this is just counting the votes. As we all know, the right is very, very motivated to vote. With that, that chart is showing, like, like what, what, what rate do Republicans vote at? What rate do Republicans versus Dems vote at? Like, voter activity. I want to see what's the most active voter demographic. Most active voter party. Like what percentage of Republicans voted as opposed to what percentage of Democrats voted is what I'm curious about. Non-whites make up four in ten Democratic voters, but fewer than a fifth of Republican view voters. I, I do love that the right has to, like, continuously pretend like this isn't just a blaring fact that, like, they're the most white group of people ever, and it's a bunch of white people saying racist shit and then assuring everyone that they're not actually racist and they have a lot of black friends. And it's actually the Democrats that are the real racists. If you're brown and you vote Democrat, you're actually part of the Democratic plantation. Regardless... To believe that, like, the right are the silent majority in this country is fucking laughable. The right are extremely dedicated to getting out there and voting. The left, not so much. Democrats, not so much. So even with looking at that chart and seeing how sharp the increase in Democrat voters and how sharp the decrease in Republican voters are, remember, this is when, like, almost all the Republicans are getting their ballots put in. Like, they're all going out to vote. And, like... Not that many Democrats are. Like, not that many progressive left-leaning people are getting off their asses to go vote. Particularly Zoomers, which are more likely to lean Democrat, are the ones who are less likely to get off their asses and vote. So even with that chart in mind, that's still overstating the representation of Republicans in this country. Does that make sense? There is no, like, cultural push against trans people coming that's going to, like, revolutionize society and make them all realize that actually trans people are bad, okay? Society's headed exponentially in a more pro-accepting of LGBT direction. If there is a genocide, it will not be a popular genocide. It will be a genocide brought about by Republicans in power who used loopholes and bending the rules to keep their power and gain their power to undemocratically engage in said genocide. It will not be a popular one.